Remember what it was like to put on a record? The pop and skip, the scratch and hiss? Some people love that sound, like novelist Hari Kunzru. One of the things that became really fascinating to me about listening to old recordings is actually how hard it is initially to, to really listen through through the crackle and through the bad sound of a worn old 78 record. You know, we're so used to beautiful stereo productions that when you first hear one of these records with a, a weak voice and a barely audible guitar, perhaps, and a lot of surface noise, you, you, you can't get there. But after a while, if you listen to a lot of this and you get better at kind of hearing through the static, all sorts of things emerge. You know, on this record, hearing somebody like Mississippi John Hurt Sing in Avalon is my hometown, it's always on my mind. Avalon, my hometown, always on my mind. Avalon, my hometown, always on my mind. Pretty mama's in Avalon, want me there all the time. This guy has a very sweet very beautiful voice and there's something about that that just sort of leapt through this noise leapt through time to me i became a sort of junkie for this moment of very simple performances very unmucked around with performances you know in whatever style you know, i started listening to field recordings you know john and alan lomax made a lot of amazing recordings of of people and some of those recordings you can hear things I use it in the novel, you can hear the cicadas in the trees, you can hear somebody's foot against the, the rough boards of the porch that they're sitting on, you can hear somebody in the background tapping time on their knee. That's a, an amazing thing to me. After you've been listening for a while, it becomes a kind of memory of a time that really has been almost erased, and because these recordings are made by people who were not considered important and historically significant at the time, it's a history from below. It's a history of hard-working people and often very seriously exploited people. And you find lines that actually tell you about what it would be like working on a chain gang, on a levee camp, you know, cutting cane on the Brazos in Texas, and how you would deal with your your overseer. Do you going to the white boss and saying that you want your your money and him spitting on the ground and saying you, you know, I'm not going to pay you. What are you going to do about it? You hear these things and you can gradually put together a very nuanced picture. Everybody knows about the evils of slavery and very few people understand properly the kind of much more subtle ways that power was exerted over black people after slavery. And that interested me a lot. I mean, certainly as a, as a British person, I thought I knew the history and I found, you know, after being in the US and also listening to this music, that there was a lot that I didn't know. Hare Kunzru is the author of a new novel called White Tears. It's a story about, among other things, old blues recordings. We'll be talking with him about the novel in a few